Hello there, I'm Dave the Green Wizard, and I am going to be doing a series of tutorials explaining how I make uh, the rotten music I make, and also uh, how I produce others, and how I do post-production for film and video. Uh, I'm making these tutorials on behalf of my production company, Houdini's Tree. And that's great. We do a lot of music production, sound design for film, music videos, and uh, animation. In this video, I'm going to be explaining how I rewire Reason into Pro Tools, uh, and how I control Reason from Pro Tools. Pro Tools will be the host application, and Reason will be the client application. Really, it's more of a Reason Rewire stroll through, uh, like a walkthrough, but we're taking our time. And I'm going to describe some of my methods and my workflows that uh, I've built up over the years, I guess. But if you're short on time, you can skip ahead to the end of the video, and uh, I'll put up a list of all the steps through the tutorial. Also, I'll make uh, shorter edits of uh, select sections of the video to make it more convenient if you're just looking for one uh, particular uh, thing. So you want to control reason from Pro Tools, eh? Well, first you gotta launch Pro Tools. I'm using Pro Tools 10, 10.3.10, uh, and Reason 7.1.1. Uh, but, you know, this tutorial should work for older versions of Pro Tools and Reason also. Okay, so <clears throat> we've launched Pro Tools, and now you need to make a new session. You can either uh, go to File and click New Session, and that'll bring up this dialog box, which is handy. Or uh, you can do what I prefer, which is to use the hotkey and hit Command or Apple. And the letter N as in Nancy. And that's a fast way to uh, bring that up. You gotta choose the right sample rate for your product. And we're gonna choose 48K, 24 bit. And just click OK. Then you got to choose a spot on your hard drive that is uh, memorable and easy to back up. One moment. <clears throat> T. Ah. So now that I've found a good spot on my hard drive, I'm going to call this session Reason Rewire underscore tutorial. Bam. Okay, and you may have noticed that uh, my session has created a click track uh, automatically. It's a nice feature of Pro Tools 10. Um, if you want to enable that, you just go to Preferences, boom, and under uh, MIDI down here, under Basics, is automatically create click track in new sessions. And uh, that's that. When I first start a new session, I like to set up my tracks, at least some of the basics. And there are two different ways that you can create new tracks. You can either go up to track and select new. You probably are familiar with that. <laughs> Listen to this speaker farting away. <laughs> or you can do what I do, which is use the hotkey Shift, Apple, and letter N as Nancy. And that brings up the same uh, New Tracks dialog box. And when you're in this submenu, you can either use the mouse and click around and go, oh, I want a stereo audio track or whatever. Or you can use another uh, hotkey, which I prefer. Uh, press Apple and hold it. And then you use the arrow keys on your keyboard and uh, left or right will choose uh, mono or stereo, and up and down will choose the track type. So I want to create a master fader, 
And if you uh, continue to hold Command and then press the plus key on your keyboard, on the 10 key, then you can add another track, which is really handy. And so I'm going to go ahead and get a stereo auxiliary track and a MIDI track. Okay, that's enough for now. Uh, we'll add some more in a minute. But... All right, and put a brick wall limiter on my master fader under dynamics. And I like the L2. I don't slam anything that I just, it's just there to protect my speakers. I also like to put an analyzer plug-in um, at the bottom here. And it's really cool, cool little graphic. It kind of helps uh, explain uh, which frequencies you're hearing, you know, kind of labels them for you. It's It makes it easier to comprehend EQ decisions too. It's nice. So I like to uh, disable this little red guy here, <laughs> which will make it so it'll stay up there if I, even if I select a different plugin like that, which is pretty handy. Okay, so we have a master fader with a limiter and an analyzer and a stereo auxiliary track and a MIDI track. So now going to the auxiliary track, we're going to plug into Reason. So on the top inserts, select multi-channel instrument and Reason. Boom. That's going to launch Reason and automatically connect it into Pro Tools, uh, which is really nice. So this is the default empty rack that uh, I prefer Reason to load when it launches. Um, it may launch in yours with a, a different default song, but under the preferences, you can uh, set that up. Right here, under default song, under general, you can either have empty rack, or you can see I've chosen a template, an empty rack uh, that I've created that's more what I'm interested in using. Maybe I'll make a video on how to make your own template. It's pretty easy, pretty darn easy. <laughs> the empty rack um, option is pretty good. It plugs in a bunch of effects and things in this version of Reason. Um, but for this tutorial, I didn't want to show that. Next, what I like to do is set up my save location. So before I do any, any work inside of Reason, I choose where it's going to be saved because it's important to save your Reason uh, session file in a logical place. So let's go up to File and Save As. And let's choose the same spot that our Pro Tools session is saved. So I navigated to the same spot that I'm saving my Pro Tools session and just in that in that session folder, I'm gonna save it, and just call it something like Reason Rewire Tutorial. Boom. If you press Tab, you can look at the back of this uh, tool rack, and you can see right here it's already plugged in to Hardware Interface One Two, but this is the built-in Reason mixing board, um, which is cool, and if you're in a hurry, it's very convenient how it functions. Uh, but in this tutorial, we're going to bypass that. So let's just go ahead and unplug that, and then tab back. Um, in the older versions of uh, Pro Tools, you may or may not have to do that if you're launching with an empty rack. So now let's create our first instrument, and. Uh, Press and hold shift and then right click and select instruments and we're going to do the redrum computer right there, bam. And you can see it's loaded a uh, default uh, disco patch, which is pretty, pretty convenient. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rename this device from redrum 1 to disco kit so it matches the uh, the patch that's loaded in the instrument. It's a very convenient way to keep things organized. 
it can get out of hand here in Reason where you're adding tons of instruments and you're like, oh, I don't know, uh, NNXT number seven? I don't know what that is. And now, press tab. Let's look at the back of this redrum. A lot of a lot of inputs and outputs here. Um, pretty crazy. I'm not going to go over all of that. I'm just going to talk about the stereo output here. And that's the output of the device. And uh, so right click there and then go down to hardware interface. And this is basically how you interface into Pro Tools um, or any other uh, application that it is uh, cliented with. You can see uh, all of these inputs are available um, because there's no asterisk. Uh, so go ahead and go up to uh, output one, boom. And it will automatically plug in uh, to hardware interface one and two. So it takes care of the right, right side as well. If you're using an older version of Reason, then you're gonna have to plug each one in separately. Um, so that's pretty handy. If you right click again and take a look at hardware interfaces, you see there's a check mark and that's indicating that it's already, that something has been plugged in. And then up here, you can see one and two are being used. And the check mark indicates where this particular instrument you're looking at is plugged in. So that's great. It's in one two. Um, you could have also um, just grabbed, like left clicked right here, and then you can drag up to the uh, hardware interface one two and just plug one in. It's the same way, but I do prefer uh, just right clicking and, and going down to hardware interface especially if my session has gotten out of control and I have a ton of instruments. It's, it can be kind of hard to grab one of these cables, see, sorry, grab one of these cables and then like drag up all the way up to the top of your screen that's maybe, you know, 10 instruments away. Uh. So that takes care of our disco kit. It's being routed into Pro Tools. Now we just have to switch back to Pro Tools and make sure that we can hear it. So we have to finish the routing. The routing hasn't quite been completed. Um, how I like to switch applications is by pressing uh, command and holding it and pressing tab. Now you, you will be able to, if you keep pressing tab, you'll switch to different available applications that are open. Um, also if you press shift, you'll move to the left. So that's kind of cool if you're looking for a specific thing and you just want to quickly move around. Uh, I like that a lot. M most of you probably already know that, but I'm just going to be thorough until people tell me to, to not do it, and then I'll be less thorough. <laughs> Switch back to Pro Tools. You can see here that uh, four uh, measures has been selected for some reason. That's a little interesting, but this is just one of those quirks. Every time you rewire into Reason and Pro Tools, it does this. It like, I'm grabbing the first four bars. I don't know why, but here it is. I've selected it. <laughs> anyway, just bear in mind that uh, it will do that. Uh, click on the Reason plugin that we left, and it might even still be up. Um, and right here you see that it has chosen Reason Mix Left and Mix Right for the rewire output. Uh, just click once there and you can see it's a little confusing, but if you see Mix Left and Mix Right, that's the same as Hardware Interface 1-2 in Reason. So we're all good there. It looks like it's already all set up. And uh, now all we have to do is connect this MIDI track to that uh, redrum computer, and then we'll be rocking, we'll be in business. So go over here to the output, the MIDI output on this MIDI track. Click once, and you can see all of the available MIDI uh, inputs you can choose. So we've got Disco Kit right there. I know what that is, because I changed the name. Boom. And now all I have to do is arm the track and test it with my keyboard and we'll see if my keyboard is hooked up oh yeah turn it up pretty loud not very loud
it's a rotten beat for you. <laughs> so I've made that connection and it's happening here. Last step I like to do um, with this particular method of interfacing with Reason is rename my uh, MIDI track and my auxiliary track so they make sense to me. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy the name. You can see it right here, Disco Kit. And I'll just double click on the MIDI track to bring that up. And all right, Disco Kit. That's nice. I might as well call this something intuitive as well. And you can either go like Disco Kit, Aux, or I would do drums, because I choose drums. <laughs> Let's go ahead and record a little. Why not? So, Command plus Spacebar will activate record. You probably already know that, too. HDMI, baby. <laughs> if you're not getting your MIDI connecting, and you're not seeing the MIDI track receiving that MIDI data, uh, you gotta make sure and check options. Right down here, there's a, an option called MIDI through. If that's not checked, guess what? No MIDI is going through. <laughs> so make sure you got that checked. Many times in my life that has become unchecked through some of my blundering hotkey attempts. And because uh, they, ha they have a lot of hidden little hotkeys um, in Pro Tools, which is cool. But sometimes you're like, what? Why is my thing behaving weird? <laughs> you probably pressed a hotkey and now you have to go hunting for a solution. I'm gonna close this. I'm just gonna get it out of my way. That's the uh, first method of interfacing with Reason and controlling that sound. This way I can add EQs to the drums uh, independently and different plugins, which is nice because you know a lot of times you need some compression or some EQ. If I want to change drastically. Yeah. Pretty nice. Cool. This is pretty much the old school way of uh, interfacing with Reason. Um, before they invented instrument tracks. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about next. So let's go back to our hotkey, uh, shift, command, N, to bring up the new tracks dialog. And let's select a stereo instrument track. Boom, I love it. Okay, <clears throat> the instrument track is cool because in essence, it's a combination of a MIDI track and an auxiliary track. So it literally takes my previous workflow and combines it into one thing. And when Pro Tools does something like that, it's it's always groundbreaking and it really, it hits home. It makes you feel like you're loved. <laughs> That's totally like both. One thing to bear in mind with the instrument track is that if you don't have, uh, if you're not seeing the MIDI side of it, that means that you need to go up to this edit window selector, uh, view selector right here, and check instrument, make sure instrument is checked. And that brings up the MIDI portion of the instrument track. Let's switch back to Reason for a moment and we will create another instrument for this instrument track. So Alt, sorry, <laughs> old habit. Uh, so press uh, Command and hit Tab and switch back to Reason. Now press and hold Shift and right click and go to Instruments. Let's do, choose a NNXT sampler. Let's get a piano going here. Boom. 
and go ahead and double click right here on this piece of virtual tape and rename it to, let's call it B Piano. And press tab, let's take a look at the back. You may be wondering why we're pressing shift first here before we right click, and that's because we are preventing uh, Reason automatically plugging this piano into the built-in Reason mixer, which since we're bypassing. Otherwise, it would automatically plug in, and we would just have to unplug it first and then plug it into where we want to go. So that's why we're doing that. Uh, if you now right-click right here on audio output uh, 1 and 2 and go down to hardware interface, uh, you can see 1 and 2 are being used. So let's choose the next available output. Uh, that would be 3. And it automatically plugs in uh, 4. And now let's switch back to Pro Tools. So right here on the MIDI portion of the instrument track, let's choose the proper MIDI output. Uh, that would be B piano. Okay, now let's uh, arm the instrument track and test it. Whoa, I'm not hearing any piano, but I see the MIDI information. Ah, oh, I forgot to rewire it into Reason. So let's go to the insert column and click multi-channel plugin and scroll down to instrument and reason and you can see here it automatically plugged this instance of the reason rewire plugin automatically plugged into uh, mix left mix right so that's not that's not good because if i arm the disco kit you can see that it's now it's coming out in both of these places. So we need to change that, boom, to three, four. That's the correct channel. And now, so drums are still in drums and let's arm the instrument track, the piano. Oh, beautiful, sad. So that's great. And then you just rename it and you can either call it B piano or just piano at that point. That's method two, uh, nice and simple and very convenient. Um, I still use the first method in specific contexts. Like for example, if I am composing, uh, you know, three parts or five parts um, that are all the same sound, like a string section or something, um, then I'll have one return and then five different you know, MIDI tracks that all come back there in the end. That's nice. <laughs> Whatever. Let's go ahead and record a little piano. So, oh, let me get my click back on. Unmute my click. I'm going to close this. Contemplative. <laughs> okay. That is pretty much how I uh, control reason with Pro Tools. Uh, and I prefer composing this way. It's a lot easier to, to automate uh, data and MIDI data, for me at least, inside Pro Tools. Um, that wraps up our tutorial. And I'm going to go ahead and show you... <laughs> farting computer. Uh, here are my specs. Pro Tools 10.3.1 and Reason. There you go. There's my story. Those are the tools I use today and thank you for joining me and don't forget to Thank you very much for watching. Pick my nose in front of you. I'm looking forward to shooting more of these tutorials and please give me feedback. Uh, just brand new at this whole thing and really anxious to, to make it better. 
All right. I guess I'll end on a truth chord. This is the truth of how I feel right now. And have a... Have a good one. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think it's enough. Yeah. That one felt pretty good, actually. It felt pretty natural. It took me about a half hour. I think that went pretty good, Lucius. What do you think? Outstanding. Bye.